Oh, we're so happy to be hosting the Neary Resources and the Consulate General here at the game tonight. Uh, Emilia is very important to Temple County. Um, uh, utilizing our workforce and uh, leasing a building from the county and manufacturing in that facility, uh, they're just great neighbors and we're glad to be hosting them here on campus. Well, they are, they're needing space, uh, so we're looking to build a 21,000 square foot warehouse that will give them additional storage space uh, and that will help uh, their process of manufacturing, uh, the flow of the, the process of manufacturing in the existing facility. We manufacture a personal care products, uh, only private label for the major retailers. So we do the Walmart brand, the Target brand, and all the Prior to the snap, clothes, false start. I really like personally the South, the Southern mentality, the weather. So it's, it's been great. I hope we, the company would keep on growing, expanding. And, and become, you know, the, the main side of Amelia in this side of the world. Uh, guys, I think you should you know, come and ex experience that uh, great part of the country. Go Lions! <laughs> I'm a fan of the East Mississippi Community College uh, because of Last Chance here. I, uh, when I started watching this uh, uh, series about two years ago, I said this is more than just football. This is about American culture. This is about how this football is a center of attention of the society. In order to understand the U.S., you have to understand football, and you have to understand everything around it. So I became addicted. I saw the first <laughs> season in less than a week, and the second season the week after. So I'm really a, a, a fan. And uh, it is, that's why it's a dream come true coming here and see, <laughs> watching a game in life. Well, I was, I'm, I'm a football fan. I'm a sports fan since the day I can remember myself. But I've been a football fan since uh, 1986 when they showed in Israel, in the only international sports program, uh, the Super Bowl in Joe Montana played an amazing game and won in the fourth quarter and I said I love this game. I think what I really enjoyed about watching Last Chance here is to see how small towns can reach such a huge audience That's because right. it's a story and it's a story about human beings. It's not a story about a ball, it's not a story about a game, it's That's a story right. about the, every person there is a star in his own life and how they affect each other and I think this is a, an amazing way of telling the story of this town and this uh, college and this the championship. Amelia is a great example of how a, a, the, every connection between Israel and Mississippi is a win-win situation. And I think that they are the spearhead of many other opportunities. We have other Israeli companies that are already located in Mississippi, just been to Columbus, Mississippi, a few uh, months ago to celebrate with the governor uh, the Stark Industries. Uh,
guys up front, they played hard, uh, the linebackers. It was a whole defensive unit as far as uh, everybody goes. The secondary guys had to tackle in this type of game. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a physical football game because they was, they was going to come in and, and try to control the clock and run the football and, and, and try to get out of this thing uh, and, and try to keep the score down as low as they possibly could. Yeah, uh, you know they did. They, they did. They they, uh, they ran around. You know, got flew to the ball and things like that. So uh, they they were pretty good tonight. <laughs> yeah, but uh, according to the defense, I mean, <laughs> pretty hey, good game. Defense, defense, mm -hmm. the defense of the thing. Yeah. Um, you know, well, shut up. Can't you? You gonna win if they score zero? There so, but they they did some they did some things on defense. So they they played pretty good and uh, we had a good game plan. Though. It's just a complete team effort. Uh, you know, and that's what we that's what we preach right here. That's what Coach Steven preaches each and every day. Uh, just improvement. Uh, we played in Dallas this last weekend, showed a lot of uh, a lot of signs of, of where we could be good. So a lot of areas we need to improve. Uh, so between now and between the start of the season, we go to Atlanta next week to play more preseason games, and that's what preseason's about: just getting better every day. So that's the biggest thing between now and November one is improvement. Well, last season we were a very young team, um, and a lot of these guys are back. So I think that's a high: is that. You know, you have a lot of guys who have played and who have been in battles and who have been close um, and, and have been in dogfights. And so, you know, bringing that experience back, I think that that's a high. But, you know, we, we had some we had some games. We went on the road and won last year. We lost a lot of close games last year. Lost a lot of games that a lot of our losses came in the last one, two, three minutes of the game. And, you know, they came down to one or two possessions. And that was a learning experience for our team, for a bunch of young guys, for a bunch of freshmen that played last year. So, you know, I think that's one thing that we take from last season into this season. You just, you preach it from day one. You know, from the day practice starts, you uh, you know, they all know they can score, but you know, the thing that they look at at the next level, for coaches that they look at for at the next level is, is what can you guard? You are what you can guard. If you're one, if you say you're a point guard, you better be able to guard a point guard. And so that's what you preach to them day in and day out. You just work on it and know that you know, that, that shot's not always going to go in. You can't control how many times that ball goes in. You can't control how many how many points you score. But what, what you can control is your effort, uh, and you can control your energy. And that's usually found on the defensive end. And so that's where you try to build your base. That's where you try to build your identity, is getting them to learn how to guard. Once they learn how to guard, you got guys who can score. You know, some scoring comes naturally to some of them. But once you get them to guard and once you buy them, get them into – to, to, to buy an end of playing defense, then you know that you can go on the road and win, and that's what championships are won, or they're won on the road. Talk about the first few games and what you look for. In that. Well, first few games, two of those, you know, two of those three are, are region games, and actually the second week of the season, we got four games in that week. We go to and play uh, up in Indiana, play two top-ranked teams in, in, in Indiana. So uh, what I look for the first couple of games is, is, is for us to get out, play fast, um, for us to put some points on the board, uh, but the biggest thing for us is to defend. That's got to be there every night. You can't you can't count on uh, you know that shot going in every time. Uh, but you got to you got to be able to guard. But I look for us to come out and play with great energy. You know we got guys, we got experience coming back. We got guys who, who know what I expect, but also we know what to expect of each other. So I expect a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm in those first couple games. We, we, we return quite a bit of our of our scoring from last year. Uh, Terry Ante Thomas is one who um, led us in scoring last year. He's coming back. Darius Agnew from Starkville, you know, he's coming off a knee injury. He was actually our leading scorer and leading rebounder until he got hurt last year. Uh, McKedrick Bell um, is a kid that's, that's coming back from Starkville who, who really blossomed towards the end of the year. Dwayne Cox is a kid who, who has really um, grown, uh, you know, played a lot for us last year and grew as the season went on. He was our second and third lead scorer, averaged around nine or ten a game. Uh, Malik Harper is a kid who uh, had two foot surgeries last year and missed the entire first, missed all the preseason, missed the first half of the year, played in the last four or five games because Darius Agnew got hurt. 
Um, and so now he's had a whole summer, he's had a whole preseason, he's a kid from Florida who's really skilled, um, who I think, and he plays really hard, who I think is going to have a big year for us. And then, you know, our other returning guys, Robert Davis Jr. has really, um, has really made an impact, has really seen his game grow, Noel Jones has, has continued to improve, and Jerry and Young. I mean, I really think that there's not going to be one guy that I think you gotta, that you got to focus on. There's going to be, there's going to be a host of guys, and as a team, when you look, as an opposing coach, when you look at that stat sheet, you see that there's multiple guys who can put the ball in the hole. That's what you want. You know, out of state, we have uh, Dawson Graham um, from Nebraska. Uh, just a tough kid. Played at played at Hillcrest Prep one in, in Arizona, one of the top prep schools in the country. Um, actually, at one time, Hillcrest had uh, DeAndre Ayton and Marvin Bagley on the same team, who were actually they were the number one and number two picks in the NBA draft this past year. So he comes from a big time prep school, um, and he's learning. It's it's any freshman coming in. I don't care where you played. It's a learning experience. So, uh, but he's improving every day. Um, Arico Gibson is a kid who's been hurt. He's a 6'6 guard from Memphis. Um, he's yet to practice because he's been nursing a, a foot injury, but he's he's slowly coming back. He's gonna be he's gonna be ready to go in November. He's a kid who's 6'6, can play the one, can play the two, can post up. He's a he's a, he's a real skilled, highly recruited coming out of Memphis. And then you have uh, Dante Powers, a kid out of Starkville, local kid, just played for Coach Carter, one of the best high school programs in the state. And uh, KJ uh, Riley, kid from uh, kid from South Haven, has kind of surprised a lot of us this year in, in, in just you know his, his athleticism, his toughness. The thing that he's learning is how to play hard every day. Uh, but once he gets that, I, I think that you know he'll really add to this team. This league is really really good this year. Pearl River is really really good. They won state last year. Um, they're really good this year. Uh, you know Jones is really good this year. Southwest. Um, but in, our, in the North Division, you know, Northeast is always, always good. Um, Accord does a heck of a job with those guys up there. They're always going to be ready to play. And then, you know, Jason Flanagan at home, you know, they're just always so tough. Um, you know, they've won the region two of the last four years. And they return, you know, some, they, they return some key pieces to that team last year. So they're going to be really good. And then Bubba up at, at Northwest, you know, they're going to be good. So. You know, from top to bottom, I, you know, I, I think that you know this league is as good as it's ever been. Well, I think this team, I think this team goes far as it wants. Um, we've got all the pieces. Uh, you know, we were really close last year, and we were playing with a lot of freshmen. And this year, we return a lot of those guys. So, and last year, I thought, you know, we were one of the younger teams in the league. So, you know, I, I think realistically, that, you know, that this team can can go back to Kansas like we did two years ago. Um, you know, this team can. You know, I don't think there's anything short of what this team can do because we have we have the experience and then we have the skill. You know, we, we're not as big as we were last year, but we're made way more skilled than what we were last year. And as you're seeing in the game of basketball today, it's you got to have guys out there that can dribble, pass, and shoot. And we got we we we've got several different lineups, and we got a bunch of guys who can do that at any given time. Every day, November one, it starts November one. You know, this is this is your team. This is. You know, the, the thing about basketball is that you can really create a home court advantage because you're right on top of the players. You're right on top of the playing action. You guys make the students make the, make the, make the atmosphere. It's not us, it's you guys. And you guys make this place tough to come in and play, and we feed off your energy. So we got to have this place packed night in and night out to make this the toughest place to play, not only in the state, in the country. And playing with lots of energy and making sure the crowd is ready. I think just being able to compete every day and be with my guys every day, like I love these guys. I think we've been through it every day since this summer. We've been getting up 5.30 a.m. workouts every morning. So we get ready to compete and go out there and play. Uh, better be ready to, to go against high defense, lots of energy, and we're going to come with it on offense. The speed of the game different. Um, knowing that every guy on the court is just as good as you, so you got to compete every possession. You can't take out no possession. And just being able to have confidence. Because if you don't got confidence, this game going to pass you by. Um, I think one of the most important things is just always making sure you're at the uh, right time, right place for everything. Just staying focused on the schoolwork and not getting in trouble on the weekend because it's a lot of distractions out there outside of basketball. Coach Bagley, my dad, my grandparents, they just always uh, gave me wisdom whenever I was younger, and I just kept that with me growing up as, a, as I got older. Uh, I'm looking forward to really get, uh, going to Hutch in Kansas.
I really think we got a really good team this year, and we got potential to like really make some noise in the national stage. For the first home game, we had for a lot of dunks, a lot of smiles, and happy, and lots of energy. I want everybody just to come out, to be ready to support, be loud, and go cry. We're looking forward to actually going up and winning states and making our way to Kansas this year. The most thing I like about scuba is that it's solid. I'm from a big city, so I'm used to hearing everybody's business at night. Around here, all I hear is grasshoppers and crickets. Coach Begley is really loving. Uh, he's a funny guy. He knows how to turn on uh, you know, the inside of you. He knows how to get on your good side. He knows how to push the bad out of you. you know, he's, just, he's a dog coach, is what I call him. He's a dog coach. Bring in energy because we, we're going to try to give you guys a show every single night you step on that court. We're going to give you our all. On the win, trying to get another banner up. For my teammates, I love the energy that they bring each and every day. I love my coach and the way he pushes and carries us to get us through the day. Well, we're still, we have a um, practice a new team, a lot of freshmen in, and they're still learning how to play. Uh, but we're learning, we're getting better every day, and we just went and um, played in the Southeast Juco Gemmarie this past Saturday, and I was surprised with some of the freshmen's performance, though, but just to get better every day. But from what I saw this past Saturday, um, we played with a lot of heart. We played with a lot of heart, toughness, and anybody knows me, toughness is the one thing that I like to instill, and that's how I coach. And so we played with a lot of heart, a lot of toughness, and our kids played extremely hard. The biggest thing to me that was a low, we were inconsistent. We would come out one game and look like we could probably play with a uh, uh, D1 school. And then we'd come at the next game and look like we should be playing Juco ball. But the, the inconsistency last year. Just drill it a little every day. We do drills every day. We break down drills. If we start off one on one, two on two, three on three, four on four. And up until this point, Practice officially started on October 1st. From uh, August up until October 1st, everything we've been doing has been breakdown drills. One on one, two on two, three on three, and building up to the five on five. Brianna Page. Brianna Page is a kid who work ethic is just, just tenacious and extremely just consistent with a work ethic every day. And Brianna Page, and we're looking for and expecting big things out of Emily Evans also. Our PG, our point guard from South Haven, Tanisha Metcalf. She played extremely well over the weekend. And for a freshman, and for those of you who have first collegiate ball games, she played extremely well. Right now, us. <laughs> from what I can see, from what I see, if we don't go out on a daily night and beat ourselves, we can contend with anybody. Right now, us. To be competitive, we're going to come with the good school spirit and to be competitive and play with a lot of pride. Pack Keys Curry Coliseum. Pack it and be loud and let's make Keys Curry Coliseum the loudest gym in the, in the state of Mississippi, Juco this year. Number one. As always, that's our goal. Knock down shots, definitely. Rebound the ball better than I did last season because I didn't rebound that great. Um, and to be a better team leader. I want to leave here with a 4.0. That's definitely a goal. I, have, I am in two societies. And I want to, you know, keep increasing my grade. Um, cheer loud, be there, be a great presence, be active, you know, cheer us on no matter what happens. Just cheer, cheer for us. Cause we gonna make it, we gonna make it aggressive. We gonna play, we gonna play real good. Kicking it from left to right, it's a sky kick. Shotgun snap, and the ball is gonna be on the ground, and EMCC's gonna come up with it at the 20 yard line. They fumble it right in the middle of the line, does the tailback, and Eric Kitchen is gonna come up with it. 
Nice job by the by the Lions, uh, grabbing him as he came through the line, uh, holding him to a minimal gain. Snap from the left hash, and they give it to Comps again. He's going to be hit hard as he gets up to the 13-yard line. And that's going to bring up a fourth down, and uh, Northeast is going to have to punt the football away. Moving from right to left, snap from the near hash to Weaver. He's going to fire it over the middle. That's a man open. It's caught at the 25-yard line, and he's sandwiched as he goes down. The snap for the 14. They uh, come near side as it's thrown, and it is caught around the 9-yard line. Third down and a long five, man in motion from near side to far. Snap by the Weaver, looks over the middle and can't find anybody. He will roll it to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, EMCC. Messiah DeWeaver from eight yards out of the Lions are on the board. Yeah, everybody at the line of scrimmage is standing up. And now they come after him uh, on the snap. They leave it with Cobbs. He's going to come around the left side. He's going to be dropped for a loss of four yards back to the 26. On second down, it's going to be Cobbs who's going to go straight up the middle, and he's going to be tackled for uh, about, about a half-yard loss on the play. So it's going to bring up now a third down and long situation. Trips wide side of the field, near side, clapping his hands. Here comes inside pressure after the snap, and he throws it near side, caught at the 20-yard line, but dropped immediately. Weaver gets great protection that time. Fires it to an open receiver, caught across the 40-yard line, outside the numbers, and he's going to step out of bounds. Twin receiver stacked either side. There's the snap, great protection. DeWeaver just steps up, unloads. He's a man wide open, caught 16-yard line, trying to get downfield, getting inside the 10, inside the 5. Adrian Miller, touchdown. And the Lions score and regain the lead. So they're going to go for it, man in motion. Far side to near, snap to DeWeaver, rolls to the near side, clutches the football, and he's going to tuck it, and he dies for the pylon. Does he get in? He did. Yes, he gets in for two, and EMCC's up by a touchdown, 14-7. to seven. Great job by DeWeaver just willing his way to this near side pylon. Man in motion from near side to fall on the jet sweep. They fake the give to him, and quarterback keeper around the near side is Collins, and he's going to be hit, wrapped up, dropped at the 40-yard line. Another sack by, or a uh, tackle from behind the line of scrimmage. It will be accredited as a sack back at the 40-yard line. To the snap from their own 39. Evans is bottled up, and now oh, it's intercepted. And it's taken away inside the 10, inside the 5, and diving to the goal line. Touchdown, EMCC. The Weaver in the shotgun, they'll snap it from midfield, turns, leave it with his tailback, he has some green, he's going to outrun everybody, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, EMCC. Bowles near side, Williams is going to be hit, dropped at the 39 yard line. misalignment um, it was a it was a, a concerted effort to drive me back crazy tonight I think so um, you know but we won the ball game and uh, our guys are our guys were very resilient you know I, I was very proud of how they how they just kept playing hard and uh, just uh, uh, happy to be uh, undefeated in the regular season undefeated uh, the guys deserve it um, we've not gone in I don't know of a time that we've gone in uh, to the playoffs undefeated and it was ended up being bad. So, um, so we're you know right now, um, you know we're we're, we're we want to get back home, uh, get everybody healthy and um, uh, get them some treatment, uh, get the soreness out of their legs, and then uh, uh, come back in uh, Sunday and be ready to. Um, uh, put together our, uh, you know, install our game plan for the first playoff game. We play fast, you know. We practice, did what we practice. We did, been going over it all week, so you know, we just executed. That's all. I just feel like it's great weather conditions. I like these type of conditions. So it, it make it show us, you know, what I'm saying that we can defend the run, and if they want to pile up and run the ball. We're gonna match up with them. Oh, it was a great night, yo. We finished the season nine, yo. Which we always gonna do. 
all to the playoffs? Well, it was, I think it was six to nothing until halftime. We came out third quarter, but we came out with a slow start. But we picked it up because we knew that we had to be better and play better, even though the conditions of the weather. So we came out, picked it up as a team. We had a few turnovers at the second half, but we got it together and started scoring. Hopefully our, our guys will prepare. And if we prepare, we'll be fine. And if we, uh, if we don't, we, we won't. Because uh, I, I think tonight our defense did a great job of carrying us. Uh, you know, and and that was, uh, I mean, that was a, that was the story of the game. They they just kept hammering, kept hammering, and gave us an opportunity to uh, to, to score, uh, and then they scored for us, and just kind of that that was the that was the that was the thing that swung the uh, swung the pendulum is when they when they picked up the fumble and ran it in. That just you know that I think that kind of uh, uh, that was the breaking point for Northeast. I mean, it was muddy. The beginning of the game, we came out straight shut out after shut out after shut out. They had got it was like after halftime they got a little momentum, got a touchdown, but we we uh how can I say this? We we didn't like fold under any pressure or nothing, we just kept playing, playing football and getting after them. Our defense, we 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 uh, we just go hard for them guys. If they need us, we need them sometimes to go back and forth. So we gonna play hard regardless on defense. But really I just like when it when this game's like this, like I gotta make sure I catch the ball when it's wet and make sure we block. Make sure that my running back can get up under me and get Break for a long runs like he did in school. He kind of like just snapped the ball and like tossed it in the air and it fell on the ground. Everybody else was just running around. They didn't see it. So I was like, all right. I picked it up, <laughs> took off running. I used to play running back. So it was just like, I went back to my old days and just ran. I want to say it's a challenge because like we work on things like that so we can get better at it. When the time comes, we can be great at it. So we just got to focus on keep our eye on the ball and make sure we pull the catch in. Uh, keep doing what we're doing. Get healthy, mainly. Just get healthy, get everybody healthy, and, and just focus up. Diversity. See who really, see who really for us and who's not. We come together as a team with some serious. Right now, we got to focus on what, what stopped us from being great tonight, what stopped us from scoring every drive, the turnovers we got to cut back on, and we got to be great with the other stuff we work on. Keep practicing well. Execute.